He's a basketball player who currently plays for the LA Lakers. He's a 17-time NBA All-Star. He became the youngest player in NBA history to reach 30,000 career points. He's Kobe Bryant, and here are his top 10 rules for success. There's a choice we have to make as people, as individuals. If you want to be great at something, you have to make inherent sacrifices that come along with that. Family time, hanging out with your friends. So at the age of 18, I knew that I was not going to be stopped. This was my life. We all can be masters at our craft, but you have to make sacrifices that come along with making that decision. Look at the hustle of Lamar Odom. Off to Kobe Bryant! And Kobe with emphasis. Once you have the passion, the thing that you're passionate about now, you can look at other people or other entities or other things or works of art, and you can draw things from that to help you be better at what you do um, by looking for those common denominators. Johnny wanted to know, uh, how do I prepare? How do I prepare? How do I study? How do I view the game? How do you build your game? And you know, my response is much like the way he builds products. You, know, you think sequentially. Well, yeah, you look at this, the, the end result of what you want to create, but in order to create that, there's so many other little things that go into this massive entity that, or, or device. It's no different than building my basketball game. You start with what do you want your game to be, what would make your game most unstoppable or hard to deal with, and now you work backwards from there, and you start building it one piece at a time, one move at a time, one counter at a time. So there's a lot of similarities there. Artest looking, gets it to Bryant. Bryant dribbling, has to put it up with the buzzer. Banks it in! <laughs> he banks in the three! And the Lakers win the game! And that is just greatness personified. Well, you, know, you just got to have the, uh, the fearlessness to t really take those shots. You know, because you, you miss those shots, then you have to deal with the, the, the criticism. You have to deal with uh, us talking about it, right? Right. right. Yeah. So, you know, and a lot of times a lot of people kind of get a little apprehensive about taking those shots because of that. Why well, when we mentioned it, it seemed like you started smiling already just yeah. thinking about <laughs> the word. Closer. Yeah, well, it, it's, 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 always, uh, it's always been a myth to me as to why um, certain people don't really like those situations because of the, the right. pressure, uh, you know, because we've all lost games before. Mm -hmm. So it's not like by you missing that shot, you're about to face something that you will never face again or haven't faced in the past. You know what I mean? We've all come up short at you know, one time or another. So um, you just got to kind of let it all hang out and you know, trust your skills and trust the work that you've put in. Now Bryant again, out between the rings, guarded by Pippen. Kobe on the move. Lobs for O'Neal. Kobe Bryant worked into the lane and Shaq hammered it in with a right hand. Time out, Portland. So that means taking things, using things in your life that, that are scars, using those moments as a weapon, right? Using those as, you know, using basketball as kind of like a vehicle through which to express yourself, right? So it doesn't, so at that moment, for us to face the Celtics again, it's not about the Celtics. It's not about your opponent. It's about you. Mm. It's about you taking your inner struggles and channeling that through the game, right? As a, as a, as a, as a way to to unleash, right? So now it became a matter of how do I express that to them? How do I get them to that point where they figure this out for themselves? Because I can't say, hey, listen, I need you to play harder. So what'd you I do? You. Well, I had to share my story. I had to open up to them and let them know I've dealt with things. This is the things that I use. This is how I go about focus. This is how I deal with adversity. This is how I deal with, you know, arguing with my wife the day of the game and showing up to the game and still having that focus to be able to play. Like I used those things to open up with them. And then in turn, they were able to, um, um, to, 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 to take those stories and, and make them their own. The Lakers, because of this man, Kobe Bryant, can take over. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Dwight Howard. Oh, boy. <laughs> he almost threw his elbow into the basket that time. Well, you just got to put one foot in front of the other. And, you know, sometimes I think, uh, you know, even for myself, it's, it's easy to become distracted a little bit and start trying to look at the final, what the final picture is going to look like. 
and you know when you do that, you can you can easily become frustrated with where you are at the moment. So, um, you know, my advice is just to focus on each day, and you know you have a plan in place of how you want to improve and how you want to get better, and you stick to that plan and, and trust the fact that you know every day that you you know um, stick to the plan will get you to your end result. I'm uh, not going to be afraid of confrontation to get us to where we need to go. I think it's, it's um, there's a big misconception where people think winning or success comes from everybody putting their arms around each other and singing kumbaya and patting them on the back when they mess up, and that's just not reality. If you're going to be a leader, you can't. You're not going to please everybody. You got to hold people accountable. Even if it's uh, even if you have that moment of being uncomfortable. You and Cole. Matter of fact, get your hands on me. Don't touch me the rest of the script. Get your hands on me. Oh, oh. Right. Yeah, I always compare it to sitting across from somebody at a dinner table if we're sitting across from each other. And would you rather sit with a person that's gonna be afraid to tell you you have something in between your teeth <laughs> and let you walk around the restaurant smiling and stuff like that when you got stuff in between your teeth? Or would you rather sit with somebody that's not afraid to have that moment of being uncomfortable to tell you you have something in your teeth <laughs> so you can get it out and don't look like an idiot in front of everybody else, right? I'm going to tell you you have something in your teeth. No matter what, even if it hurts my feelings. I'm going to tell you you have something in your teeth. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. And, and then it's your choice if you want to get it out or you just want to leave it there and look like an idiot. It's everybody wants to compete. I think it's it's knowing how to compete and also, you know, I, um, you know, true competitive instinct really kicks in when you're down. You know, and like I said, a lot of people are competitive at things that are rolling their way, and, you know, um, things that they're naturally good at. You know, but it takes a true competitive person to, uh, when things are down like this, to really step up to the plate and go, out, go after it. Best, and that's bring people to their feet with a sensational play. No, it's, it's of utmost importance. Like, I, I mean, I was such a diehard fan, Laker fan growing up, man. And just my personality, like, it would, for me to ask for a trade or to go play someplace else to try to chase a championship, that's not me, man. That's not being, that's not what my career has been about. That's not who I am, man. You know, I stay with it. You know, stuff that I've been through in my life and been through in my career if it just taught me anything is the fact that you'll have good moments, you have bad moments, you have great moments, you have horrible moments. You just keep going through all of them and then things work themselves out. Here we got a dribble drive, change of direction by Bryant. Slam dunk. Woo! You talk about elevation. Chick, he went up to the rafters before he decided to put somebody on a poster. And I've always had some of my best performances on the road. Fans boo. I absolutely love it. I thrive on it. They don't understand who I am. Not only am I comfortable being an outsider, that has become a source of motivation for me. So when I go to these places and you boo, it actually comforts me. <laughs> yeah. They'd love to get it into Nash's hands, and they do. Ball oh, knocked away, stolen by Parker. Oh, One-point game. Walton can tip it. Bryant with the save. Oh, you gotta get a shot here. Final seconds. Bryant for the win. Bang! Kobe Bryant has hit a shot at the buzzer! That he gets to the gym at 4.30 in the morning to see Kobe just drenched in sweat like he jumped in a pool. And then Kobe wants to make him do conditioning and waits for a couple hours. So then when the trainer goes to sleep after for a few hours, he comes back to the gym at like 11 a.m. and he sees that Kobe never left the gym at all. 
because he had to make sure that he made 800 shots before he left after he's been working out for hours and hours. Like, you think this is new to me? This is an excerpt from Shaq's book talking about Kobe. Look, they had a feud, so he says, he was so young and so immature in some ways, but I can tell you this, everything Kobe is doing now, he told me all the way back then he was going to do it. We were sitting on the bus once and he told me, I'm going to be the number one scorer for the Lakers, I'm going to win five or six championships, and I'm going to be the best player in the game. And I was like, okay, whatever. Then he looked me right in the eye and said, I'm going to be the Will Smith of the NBA. Shaq used to say he would catch Kobe Bryant on the gym, in the court, without a ball, practicing plays. This is who he is. It's just ingrained in him to do whatever he can for a slight edge, and Shaq said, this, this is funny looking, but you know what, it probably helped him. See, a lot of people want to, they say that they're gonna do something. Kobe Bryant does it, right? Talk is cheap, but Kobe did it because he competes with himself every single day. He wants more out of himself every single day. It's that competitive drive to be the best that carries him. It carries him through practices. It carries him through the weight training sessions, conditioning, making sure that he gets 800 shots every day carries him to work on his craft when no one is watching. Four away from Elgin Baylor's Laker record. For three and goes. Yes! <laughs> well, there's 70. Everybody wants it to get into Kobe's hand. Kobe pump fake for two. Kobe stopped the Laker record. 81-point <laughs> game. Ladies and gentlemen, you have witnessed the second greatest scoring performance in NBA history. Thank you guys so much for watching. I made this video because that Vinder Kamba asked me to. So if there's a famous entrepreneur you want me to profile next, leave it in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. I'd also love to know which of Kobe Bryant's top 10 rules mean the most to you, you're going to implement on. Leave it in the comments. I'm going to join in the discussion. Thank you guys so much for watching. Continue to believe and I'll see you soon.